Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Once again, it is time for my client Doug's vlog. And here is Doug starting the week off with a floor press. We did a 315 floor press. Uh, again, we're kind of coming back from some serious overreaching, some wrist inflammation. Uh, so we're happy to get that. Uh, he also lost weight. And I was like, Doug, what happened? This is one of my guys who has to carefully track his food in order to maintain body weight. Um, he's actually been quite a bit leaner than he is here. We've bulked him up to the heaviest body weight he's ever been. He easily made weight for uh, his, his meat, like the 181. We actually got him into the 180s, and he did a very tiny water cut for the meat. And by tiny, meaning he just fasted after dinner the night before. Like, he's just like, I'm going to cut my food and water off late tonight and uh, not eat breakfast, right? Walked in, made weight. Now he's down into the 170s again. He, he dropped like 10 pounds. He's like, come on, Doug, we got to get your food back up, bro. Come on. We have to get the food. Uh, for supplemental work, though, we're doing some pause benching uh, rows. I'm having him do some barbell and dumbbell rows uh, within his ability to do so uh, right now. Again, the wrist at some angles is, is a little funny. We're doing pretty good now. He's just He's been a little worried about it. So uh, we're doing rows, then we do some dumbbell extensions, and I have him do one set of band press downs just for his tricep tendon health, because um, I do have him do a lot of JM presses at different points in the year. Again, just with the, the, the wrist being inflamed, we've left it alone. Uh, we don't want to do those. So we've stuck with really small movements with lighter weights, uh, like dumbbells. It's kind of hard to go too heavy on those. You're not going to hurt your wrist, particularly the ankles and ball because of the hammer grip, the, that, that neutral grip, much easier. Um, so he, I let him always finish up with one set of really high rep band press downs, and he likes to do them like as a drop set. He gets way back, gets that close to failure, and then as he gets fatigued, he just gets closer and closer. It reduces the tension. Um, so it's, it's really just like a one all out high fatigue set. And go jump on with that. Um, I like to do stuff similar to that myself sometimes where I just like to do one all-out set. Um, I've cut them out this week because I needed it for tricep recovery. But, uh, you know, perfectly fine with me as a coach if he wants to do it that way. Uh, max effort lower. He did a deficit deadlift. He stopped at 435. All right, we stopped at 435. We're good there. All right, we're good. That's all we need. Um, I realize some of these, I don't know if I got them into reels or shorts this week. Some of his max lifts, I think I forgot to do them. I need to check that out. Um, here we are doing safety bar good mornings. I'm really wanting to double down on his hamstring work right now. He needs hamstrings. He needs posterior chain. Uh, fortunately, we've got the safety bar to do good mornings. He has the reverse hyper. That helps. I have him do a lot of band work, which you guys will see coming up. Uh, you know, so for supplemental lifts for him, I've got him doing split squats uh, also. Um, I think I'm only going to do those on his max effort days. A dynamic, I want him to just focus on posterior chain after this. So it's going to be speed work, a lot of good mornings, reverse hypers. Um, again, I, I need to double down on it. His squat is, is better than his deadlift. He's had a long history of low back and hamstring weakness, like since before he even came to me. Like we, we spent a lot of time building that up. Like I think when we started, he, he was, you know, a good venture, right around a 300 venture. And we've got him up to like 350 plus at his best uh, when he's peaked for meets. Um, so we put like 50 pounds on his bench. But uh, the deadlifting and the, and the low back stuff was an issue. Uh, he has even pulled hamstrings and stuff since I've had him doing warm-ups. Uh, I don't want people to say, oh, you gave him something too heavy. No, no. I think when we started, he was struggling with the empty bar on good mornings. So again, we've had a, a long fight there, yet he's competed successfully in powerlifting. He's qualified for nationals, world championship, in, or not world, so he's qualified for North American if he wants to do it. Um, I need to check. He may actually be qualified for worlds. I forgot to double check. Oh, no. Brain dead today while doing this one. Uh, I think he actually is qualified. <laughs> I'll check it out later. Uh, but again, hamstrings. So I have him do this for building his tendons. 
you know, just like we do with band work for certain things, I will take certain tendons and I'll have people do high rep band work. You guys have seen me do it with, with rear delts. I've done it for quads on camera. Doug does it for hamstrings, okay? He does it for hamstrings. We do these really high rep sets uh, to, to deep fatigue with the bands. Uh, again, builds tendons, builds work capacity, makes these muscles and tendons more resilient to pulls. Okay, he needs that. We have to have that for him. Again, just given the history that we have there. Plus, we need it for his deadlifting, right? Because uh, hamstrings are always a weakness for him. Low back has is, is historically been a weakness, but I think with so many glute ham raises that we do now, or I'm sorry, reverse hyperextensions, it's less of an issue, but the hamstrings themselves can be limiting. Um, and again, we know that he's prone to hamstring injuries. We know the hamstrings are often weak for him. And that makes it hard to build them up. You know, when they, they get injured fairly easily, you know, it's, it's always a slow process building them because we have to watch the overuse. And it's just, you know, the, the history that he has there. And that's the, the thing, you know, when you have lifters with certain deficiencies in their lifts, uh, weak links, injury history, you may have to deal with that for years. Something coaches need to remember. You know, it can be a very long process to correct those, even if they're competitive, even if they're doing well. All right, so then we finished the week up with this dynamic work. There's our speed benching. We do safety bar box squats, all right, for speed. Again, we get a great shin angle. Look at that nice vertical shin, all right? Good vertical shin is what we want to see. He's got a good squat right now. All right, his bench is his best lift, squat is second, deadlift just needs the most work. So he tends to do well on those box squats. All right, he's got quad strength, he's got adductors. Uh, speed pulls, and then of course we finish up with uh, all the regular stuff, all right? Good mornings, reverse hyperextensions, all those important lifts. And I'll let you guys watch this finish up, so I hope it has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.